Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I've done one of these kind of videos, so today I'm going to do a quick start guide and settings guide for the Quest 3 for PC VR via wired link cable. So in this video, I'm not going to be covering AirLink or virtual desktop for wireless connection. It's just going to be for the wired link, which in my opinion is still the best way to go for seated VR gameplay and for playing Sims. So first up, before we get going, I'd advise you to check out the link requirements on the Meta site. So I'll give a link to this page in the description below. So you just want to make sure that the PC you're running or you're thinking of building is up to requirements for running MetaLink. Now, in terms of recommendations, if you haven't already picked one yet, I'd go for an NVIDIA card. They tend to be a little bit better for things like ASW, asynchronous space warp uh, over the AMD equivalent and uh, and there's also more advantages with the OpenXR toolkit support for the NVIDIA cards. So if you haven't picked one yet, I'd look at NVIDIA first and also the minimum entry point I'd recommend for say sim racing and flight simming for in VR would be something like a 3070 or better. Um, ideally go for a newer card if budget permits with the uh, top tier card currently being a 4090. Um, if you're thinking of getting a laptop, then you want to look at least a 3080 as the laptop GPUs tend to be about a tier less performant than the desktop equivalent. If you are considering getting a laptop for VR, just do your research beforehand and make sure that other people have been able to use it successfully in VR with a Quest 2 or Quest 3. So if you haven't chosen it already, you'll need to pick one of the Quest 3s. Now for PC VR, the available space on the headset doesn't make any difference to the experience. So if you're mostly going to be using this for PC VR, save yourself some money and go for the 128GB version. It's only really if you plan to use it a lot in standalone mode and install quite a lot of games, or say you're on the go, you're not at home that much and you want to use it out of the house, then go for the bigger storage version. So the other bit of hardware you'll need to get, which doesn't come included in the box, is a link cable. So the official one is actually quite expensive, so in the UK it's currently £89. And the reason for that is a fiber optic cable where most of the other cheaper cables are not fiber optic. They're just uh, copper wire throughout. Um, having said that, I have had the official cable in the past and after about 12 months of use, it stopped running at its USB free speed. Uh, it dropped down to USB 2. Not sure why it's possible it could have got damaged. Uh, so since then, I have tried a few different cables and after trying a few different cables, the one I've settled on using is the Kujek one, which I use quite a lot with the Quest 2 and has been uh, really good. Uh, what seems to be the problem, I look at the different reviews, all of the cables seem to be hit and miss. So it does appear to be a bit of a cable lottery when it comes to link cables. Uh, however, this one I've used no problems and quite a few of my friends have used it as well. The good thing with this particular cable is that it allows you to plug in the charge cable in line with the USB cable. So something else to bear in mind when you're picking a cable and plugging it into your PC, you want to make sure that you've got enough power being output by the USB free socket on your PC to maintain charge. Now with the Quest 2, this wasn't too much of an issue. The power adapter was only rated for 10 watts. I'll leave a link to this cable in the description below if you're looking, which will be my affiliate link. So. If you do choose to get one, it'll help out the channel if you buy it via that link. So once you've got your hardware all picked out and you're all ready to go, the next step is to download the Oculus app. So again, I'll leave a link to this in the description below. Currently on the web page, there's only a section for Quest 2 to download software. Maybe by the time you see this video, this will be updated and there'll be a Quest 3 one, but it's essentially the same software for each of these. So if you just go to this page, download the oculus setup.exe, wait for that to download and run it. So one USB setting we want to check before we plug the cable into the PC is the power plan setting. Now, if you just go into your start menu and type edit power plan, and then go into change advanced power settings, there'll be one active one based on the power plan you've got active on your PC. I'd go through them all and change this particular setting. At the minute, we've got this bit some highest performance setting. Uh, that's because I'm using Process Lasso. So you're probably on one of the these two perfor high performance settings. 
So if we go into here and then just go to USB settings, USB selective suspend setting, just make sure that's set to disabled. This was causing me a lot of grief on my AMD 7800X3D motherboard setup. However, it wasn't an issue on my Intel 12900K. So AMD users in particular check this out. However, generally speaking, I'd make sure this is set up on both PCs. And if you do any Windows updates, double check the setting because power plan settings can also be affected by various OS updates. So once we've got the Oculus software installed, we'll just want to run the Oculus app just by typing Oculus. This will launch up and then it'll go select your headset. So we're going to add a Quest 3 and then we're going to do it via link cable. And here it'll say to plug in the link cable into a USB 3 port on your PC and the other end into the Quest 3 itself. We've heard the noise, we've got a green tick there to say it's detected a USB 3 connection. Hit continue. And this is where we'll run a speed test by hitting the test connection button here. And there we go, the test is complete with a bandwidth of 2.3 gigabits per second. So ideally you want at least over one and a half to get the most out of this. Otherwise, if it is lower than that, and say for instance, if you're running on USB 2, you'll find that you won't be able to run the link connection at a high enough bit rate to make it look the best. Um, so ideally you want USB 3 and with a bandwidth over one and a half gigabits. So 2.3 is pretty good with the QJet cable. So we'll hit continue. So once we've got the Quest 3 connected, the first thing you wanna do is just click on it on the Oculus app, then go down to graphics preferences. And you'll probably find by default, this is already set to automatic recommended on the render resolution. So based on your system's GPU and performance as rated by the Oculus app, it'll um, adjust the resolution for you. But I suggest you um, move the slider to the left and then manually set this based on the performance of the games that you're running. Um, so in my case, I'm running a NVIDIA RTX 4090. So I'm able to max out the resolution on the headset. And if I ever run into problems with games, then I'll lower the refresh rate. But normally for sim racing, I'll leave it on 90. Um, if I can't quite reach 90 at the desired graphic settings in the game, I'll come back and perhaps drop this to 80 hertz or 72, but most of the time I'm fine. If you're struggling with performance, you could either try lowering the refresh rate or lowering the render resolution, but most of the time people prefer to have a higher resolution over refresh rate. Uh, but you basically want something that's stable. So there's two options you can go for either the high or the low. The the third option, I guess, is um, for flight sim games like Microsoft Flight Sim or DCS. There is the option to enable asynchronous space warp, which will uh, lead us onto the next setting, which is to do with Oculus Debug Tool. So bundled with the installer, there's this Oculus Debug Tool app, and that's located in C program files, Oculus support, Oculus diagnostics. So within there, there's this Oculus debug tool. So I've just made a shortcut for this on my desktop. So if you double click that, that'll bring up this little GUI here. So this is where some of the other important settings that you'll want to alter. The key one being the encode bitrate. So this is the, the video bandwidth available for the link connection. So I believe this maxes out at 940, which you can't actually enter directly on the GUI. If you try and enter a number, it limits it to 500. So if I try 510, for example, it stops. It won't go any higher than that. So 500 is the limit you can type in. But in order to get around this, all you need to do is just open up Notepad, type in 940. Then you can copy and paste that in. So it's a cheeky little hack for... Uh, enabling a higher bit rate. Perhaps in future updates, this will uh, go up higher, but that's a, that's as far as it can go at the moment, but it does make a difference. So if your system and your link connection gives you a high enough speed, then try turning that up. If when you turn that up, you, you tend to get disconnects, then maybe lower that down, but that, that should give you the best video link connection. The other key setting to look at, which I mentioned briefly, was this asynchronous space warp. So this is basically fake frame generation. So if you can't, reach 90 hertz, um, but you can get close to 45 or over, then what you want to do is go into the asynchronous space warp setting here. And I'd set this to force 45 FPS SDW enabled. So this is quite a popular setting for slower 
flight sim type games. Um, the other option is you could just leave it on auto, but the problem with auto is if you're going above the refresh rate, like 90 hertz, then back below it again, you'll, you'll find there'll be a slight bit of stutter as it switches between it on and off. So your best bet is either just having it off when you don't need the extra fake frame boost or just force it enabled. I'll just quickly go over some of the other settings that are in here. The FOV tangent multiplier, this is sometimes handy if you're running on like a potato system that's really struggling to, to run even on the lowest settings. This essentially lets you alter the FOV that's rendered onto the headset. So you can reduce this to say 80% by adding 0.8. So, so that'll reduce both the vertical and horizontal FOV by 20% down to 80. Uh, but like I say, you can either leave that default on zero or one and that'll give you the full FOV. So that's really there. If you if you're stuck for a bit more performance and there's no other option, you can't lower the graphics or anything like that. Video codec, leave that on H.264. H.265 doesn't seem to play nicely with wide link. I think it's mainly for air link. Distortion curvature. If you've got a high performance PC, leave that on low. If you're struggling for performance, move this to high. So counterintuitively low is better quality and higher is lower lower quality slashed encoding this is on by default but if you ever see any white banding or artifacts you can sometimes get rid of that by turning that off this just affects the way in which the video image is sent to the headset and the final setting that i'll go over is the visible hood so if you're trying to see what kind of performance you're getting in the headset then just drop this down to performance and you'll be able to see what fps is being attained and this is a good way to check whether um, asynchronous space warp is on or off um, so if your headset is set to 90 hertz but sdw is set to 45 you'll see on the performance counter uh, the fps will be set at 45. so depending on which settings you change you may need to restart the app alternatively you can just unplug the headset via the usb cable and plug it back in and over on the Oculus Debug tool, there is a restart Oculus service. So for some of these, you may need to. So if you change the, the encode bitrate, for example, you, you might need to restart that, but asynchronous space warp tends to work without a restart. So what you want to do next is once we're all connected and we've got the settings that we want, we just want to pop the headset on and then go to Oculus Link and connect. So if you want to launch a game in VR, once you've got Oculus connected, you'll want to either launch it via the headset or via the Steam library itself. So this is what I tend to do. I tend to just launch it from Steam. And then you get some options here, whether you want to play in 2D via Steam VR or via Oculus VR. So when you've got the Oculus option, uh, I tend to run that. It does perform slightly better in, in Oculus mode uh, in this particular game. Some games won't have this, in which case you'll have to launch it in Steam VR mode only. So we'll launch this in Oculus VR mode. So now we've got it open, you'll see the game has rendered a side-by-side -side left eye, right eye view. Uh, you can actually see what's being shown directly in the headset by firing up another app called Oculus Mirror, which is in the same location as the Oculus Debug tool. So we'll just open this up here so we can see exactly what is being seen by the headset. So if I just move this around now, you can see it's moving. I'll just quickly cover some of the Steam settings. So this is the new Steam VR UI. Uh, it's actually the first time I've looked at it since the update. Um, but the key thing you want to check out is if down on the left side, you want to go to VR settings and I'd make sure that you don't have an auto because again, Steam VR will try and guess what resolution to pick based on the specification of your PC. So just move that over to custom and then I leave that at 100%. So this resolution should then reflect the resolution you've set in the Oculus app by the render resolution. So this is the global setting applied to the headset across all games. You can just go into the per application video setting, which applies to Steam VR games, and you can tweak the resolution and FOV and a bunch of other settings here on a per game basis. So this would be the way I would tweak Dirt Rally 2, for example, um, and I'd leave this on 100% on custom. So that covers it for most of the basic settings on MetaLink on the Quest 3. For some games, you may find that they support OpenXR natively, such as Microsoft Flight Simulator and iRacing and now DCS. 
So in those cases, it's worth checking out the OpenXR toolkit, which allows you to enable additional features that may not be available in the game natively, such as foveated rendering. You can also apply the OpenXR toolkit to even some games that don't support OpenXR via Open Composite, but I've done a video covering this separately. So if you want to do some further research and understand what the OpenXR toolkit is, I'll leave a link in the description below on how you can gain a bit more performance using these third party tools. All right, that's it for the quest free quick start guide. Hope you found this useful. Till next time, bye for now.